What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and in this video, I'm discussing Nick Walker and Martin Fitzwater. Are they best friends now, and why Nick believes in Martin's abilities? Hardy Chupin, 12 and a half weeks out, posing video. Derek Lunds for 2.0, prepping for 212 Olympia. Who is he, and could he actually win the title this year? Keon Pearson, 12 and a half weeks out. Derek Lunsford's big update. William Bonax, crazy arms and how he's looking and why he's going to be his best ever in 2022. Hunter Labrada bringing his best in December. Flex Lewis growing on TRT. Brett Wilkin, eight and a half weeks out, plus much more. It's a huge body reading news video, guys. I hope you enjoy it. What's up, desktopers? Now let's get straight into this one. So Martin Fitzwater and Nick Walker. Basically, we we're sort of at odds. Martin said something online about Nick that was, you know, a little bit disrespectful and maybe a little bit immature, and he lost the sponsorship out of it. And, you know, he said basically he doesn't like Nick Walker, but he did apologize. They sort of had a little bit of a feud going on. They didn't like each other. But it appears that these guys are back on good terms. From everything I've seen on social media, I saw this where Nick Walker's openly supporting Martin Fitzwater, which is really, really cool to see from Nick. And then uh, I watched the most recent episode of Brochat, and here's what Nick Walker had to say about Martin Fitzwater. You think Martin's that good, eh? Yeah. Why would Martin, I look, I think Martin's good too, but why would Martin beat Andrew, if Andrew just beat him and they're both going to be better. Because I've seen pictures. Oh, really? Okay, tell me you this. You forgot. Me and Martin are best friends now. I know. What the fuck happened there? You guys <laughs> <laughs> You guys are so funny. You know what's fucking hilarious about you guys? They're both this, idiots. This is how bodybuilders are. So it's pretty funny that he did mention that. I did see, obviously, Nick openly supporting Martin, all that sort of stuff. So everyone's sort of seen it online. Or everyone's seeing it online now that um, these guys have made up essentially. And it seemed like they were sort of the biggest feud in bodybuilding. So it's sort of cool to see him make up, but also it actually doesn't make that rivalry as exciting if these guys, you know, you know, Martin obviously levels up and gets towards the level of Nick Walker. Uh, it'd be much more exciting if these guys didn't like each other, but I do like to see these guys getting on and, you know, making up. If you say one, me, if, if you say one nice thing about them, like, oh, you know what? That guy's not that bad. Yeah, That's <laughs> it. That's all it takes. <laughs> um okay so the pictures you saw how was he five percent better than texas ten percent better than texas is he more shredded from the I'm gonna, he's definitely harder and leaner and his legs are a lot bigger and fuller really would, yeah, would you be afraid to stand next to him no <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to ask Nick Walker that question, he just came fifth in the Olympia. There's no way that he's going to say that he's scared to stand next to Martin Fitzwater. Not that that's a joke, but Nick Walker basically said he's not scared to stand next to anyone. So I don't think he's going to be scared to stand next to Martin. So obviously believes in Martin Fitzwater big time. I believe he picked him second when he did his predictions. And uh, it's good to see these dudes making up. And let me know what you think in the comments below about Martin Fitzwater, how he's looking now and what his chances are at that 2022 UK Arnold Classic. And I did want to mention as well, this is the most recent physique update I've seen from Mark Hector, who's looking absolutely ridiculous. Will his legs be big enough? Let me, let me know what you think in the comments below on that. I'm looking forward to seeing how he matches up because he's a wide guy. He has put on a ton of weight. Reportedly, it's 25 pounds more muscle from when he last stood on stage where he looked awesome, but he definitely was undersized. So I can't wait to see how that looks against, you know, the likes of Andrew Jacked, Martin Fitzwater, James Hollingshead, who's also looking great right now. I've seen the photos. He sounds a little bit unsure because he is sort of doing it on his own this time with a bit of advice, it seems like, from um, Jordan Peters and also his uh, former coach, Patrick Tour. I do see he sort of tags those guys a little bit as well. So I don't know what his exact situation is. I believe he's doing it mostly himself or at least making the final call. But I'm very much looking forward to seeing how James Hollingshead looks on that stage as well because he's a guy that could win it or come fourth. And I'm pretty sure this top four could be interchanged any which way uh, depending how they show up. Our next update is from Keon Pearson, 213 pounds, looking dangerous at 12 and a half weeks out of that 212 Olympia. I mean, when I look at these photos, I'll go from the front lat spread first. It looks to me just like he needs to just fill out those legs, just that little bit more to come in at his very best and a very balanced um, physique. But he has brought them up over the last couple of years. And I'd say he's in a very good spot right now, 12 and a half weeks out of the Olympia. And then you see that front relax. It's just, those shots are absolutely ridiculous. The front shots for Keon are just so dominant based on his structure and shape and muscle bellies. It's just 
absolutely insane. And he doesn't look like a guy that trains the way he does because he trains hardcore, sort of like that branch style. He was training with Martin Fitzwater for a while and they trained absolutely balls to the wall. But he looks like a guy that just has the genetics and he just sort of grows and gets bubbly. But no, nah, he trains hardcore. He's just that obviously different genetics produce different physiques. Now, Brett Wilkin, here he is at eight weeks out of that Romania Pro where he's hoping to qualify for the 2022 Mr. Olympia. And that would just be another quality name added to the lineup. So Brett Wilkin obviously is on Bodybuilding University. We're actually going to be recording a live show this week. I'll put the exact times up on the desktop bodybuilding Instagram page and also on the um, also on the community page on YouTube as well and all that sort of stuff. So I'll try to spread it out there because we want as many people on there live as possible because we want live questions basically for that podcast. And I do want to do the second podcast this week as well. I was planning on doing it earlier, but there was a few issues in terms of uh, a bit of an injury I had and not been able to sort of sit up properly for a little bit as well. So uh, we will get onto that, but let's get onto a few Olympia physique updates. And the first one here is from William Bonac. His arms are absolutely ridiculous. Like seeing them in person, I saw him actually compete against Sean Roden in Australia many years back. And it was just crazy. I got to interview him up close. Well, I actually didn't interview him. Dave Palumbo interviewed him and I videoed that interview. But just seeing the muscle bellies up close, they're absolutely mind-blowing. So when you see this guy in person, he's crazier than he actually is in photos and videos. And there's also this photo posted up by Chad Nichols, his coach. And he says, Team Mayhem update. Wanted to give everyone a quick update on the Conqueror. William Bonac, we are at the end of the off-season phase. Everything is right on target. Our goal was 120 kilograms. In this photo, he is 120.3 kilograms, which is 264.6 pounds. This will, without a doubt, be the best William Bonac we've ever seen. I know everyone always says that, but get ready for something crazy in Vegas. Hashtag Team Mayhem. So I'm expecting it because William Bonac is the biggest I've ever seen him in his off-season. Absolutely enormous. The muscle bellies are just absolutely mind-blowing. So I can't wait to see what this looks like dialed in because I think he's going to be bigger than he was at the Arnold Classic. He's had the gyno surgery. Really, he's going to be a lot better version than he was at the Arnold, which he did get beaten by Brandon Curry, but I think that was mostly due to the gyno, in my opinion. So he's obviously got rid of that, so that puts him ahead of Brandon based on that look, but I think Brandon's going to be way better as well. Um, and then obviously with more muscle and the first proper off-season with Chad Nichols. So I'm very excited to see what William Bonac brings to that 2022 Mr. Olympia, but there are some serious other bodybuilders doing this contest as well. One of them is fourth place finisher from last year's Mr. Olympia, Hunter Labrada, obviously carrying that name, you know, into the 2022s and uh, from back from the 90s when his dad was competing and placing as high as second in the Olympia. And his physique is looking great this far out. I think really what all Hunter needs is just a bit more depth and detail to the muscle. And I think once he gets that, he's going to be very, very hard to beat because the judges obviously liked him last year. And I thought he could have been harder last year. So had he brought, you know, if he brings last year's package with a little bit more mass in the right places, plus better conditioning, it's hard to see him placing outside the top four, but there's so many other good guys. It's hard to sort of put him in the top four predictions as well. So he could be a guy that ranges anywhere from right up there in the Olympia, right down to seven or eight if he misses his mark a little bit. But let me know where you think Hunter Labrador will place at the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Now to a man who's been third of the past three Mr. Olympias, I believe it is now, and that's Hardy Chupin, who's training for that 2022 Mr. Olympia 12 and a half weeks out right here. And he does a little posing update on his latest YouTube video. The full link is in the description below. You can see he's looking pretty outrageous. Those biceps are just so filled out, so crazy. The video is obviously a very close up one. The delts, I mean, they look a little bit suspect still. I mean, I don't think that Hardy's going to be able to make that actually go away, but I think that he's obviously stayed away from them because I don't think they're getting any worse or anything like that. So I think, if anything, they look a little bit better. I know Harney is meticulous about that sort of stuff, so he'd probably be advising massage and all that sort of stuff to try to break down any scar tissue that's actually in there. But I want you guys to let me know, how do you think Hardy Chupin's looking in this latest physique update? Because I think he's looking crazy. He's got a lot of thick muscle. The only thing I'll say I don't like is that he's got those pointy elbows and obviously the shoulders are a little bit pointy as well on that front lat spread, which I don't like the look of personally. But I think that, you know, he brings such crazy conditioning and so much wow factor to the stage that it sort of outshines those sort of, uh, I suppose, weaknesses on his physique. So let me know who you think Hardy Chupin will place about 2022 Mr. Olympia as well. And another guy who's actually contending for that 2022 Olympia win. It seems like there's about eight guys now that are going to be contending for this show. And that's Derek Lunsford. Huge update, 12 and a half weeks out of that Mr. Olympia, looking enormous. And if he brings something like what he brought to the Pittsburgh Pro Guest Posing, but dialed in, it's going to be crazy for Derek Lunsford. I'd love to actually know, had they sort of planned it from that Guest Posing, 
to now that they're going to do the open no matter what. Like, is he going to try to qualify or whatever? Obviously, Nick Trigilli did a video saying that when Flex Law was pulled out, it sort of opened up that special invite, and then he was like, cool, I'm going to you know not have to compete now, and I can hopefully get that special invite for the Olympia. But let me know what you think, 12 and a half weeks out of the Olympia, how Derek Lunsford is looking. I think he looks absolutely huge, enormous. I think he's going to get more impressive as well as he gets in better condition because he does have so much wow to his physique. So I cannot wait to see him in just another few weeks' time. Now to the man that I think is Derek Lunsford 2.0, and that's Brian Balzano, 238 pounds. 12 and a half weeks out of that 212 Olympia. I think he is super underrated. Look how big this guy is. He's bursting full. If you don't know who Brian Balzano is, he won the Indy Pro earlier this year, qualified that 212 Olympia. It was the first show of the year. And I thought he was sort of underrated at it because he looks fantastic. He's got etched out, cheese grated glutes, and he's made a crazy transformation over the years too. So he did his uh, first show in 2014. I believe he goes pro card that year as well. 2019, you can see obviously his physique had gotten really, really skinny. It looked like he lost a ton of muscle. So 2019, only three years ago. So it's crazy to actually look at his physique there. And then you go to 2022, where he's qualifying for the Olympia, adding a ton of mass to his physique. So I cannot wait to see where the future lies for Brian Balzano. I think it'll probably end up being in the open class considering he's 238 pounds right now. But I think this guy is a serious contender for the 212 Olympia. I will say one thing and the one thing that I think he can improve to place higher at that Mr. Olympia. And that's basically just holding his poses longer because when he hits his poses, sometimes he doesn't, you know, hold them for hardly any time at all. So he's like, you know, transitioning for 90% of his sort of routine when he comes out. So I'd love to see him hold those poses longer and just sort of really etch out that detail because when he hits some shots, they're so impressive that you just want to sort of look at the shots. So if he held them for two, three, four, five, six seconds each one, it would just make so much more impact rather than just watching him sort of transition. So I'd love to see Brian Balzano take that on board and just sort of hit those poses a little bit longer. But let me know what you think. Should he hit his poses longer or not? And how do you think he'll do the 212 Olympia? On to seven-time 212 Olympia champ, Flex Lewis posted up these physique updates. Now, Flex Lewis is obviously retired, but looking at his physique, his arms look just as big as ever. Um, obviously, he's got crazy proportions and all that sort of stuff. I will say one thing about his physique here. His shoulders do look a little bit downsized, and he is downsized overall. He has mentioned it in terms of his weight and all that sort of stuff, but he looks fantastic. If I could retire and you know in his shoes and then look like him, that is absolutely next level. And he seems to be enjoying life and being healthy and he's got his gym out there in Vegas and he seems like he's just absolutely killing it in business and all that sort of stuff. So I love to see it because he's one of the good guys of the sport. When he posted up these physique updates, he says September 21st, 2022, weight is 214 pounds. So he's over that 212 cap, uh, training three to four times a week. Um, and he says, no cardio, it says weekend hike. So he's just living a the life there in Vegas. And uh, it sounds like a pretty cool sort of way to be, you know, just do a weekend hike, train three, four times a week. Now, I'll just highlight a few things that he said in this post. He says, TRT started Monday. I've truly worked hard to get all my blood work all in line. And he says, I've given my body an incredible break. So he obviously came completely off by the sounds of it. He says, I've given my body an incredible break, but it's time as I feel my body is not working optimally as the numbers show it. But I do feel good, not great. But now it's time to aid my health, not to enhance a look. So he's going on TRT to basically just sort of aid his health because if your numbers are too low, it's actually pro-inflammatory. So if you take testosterone, testosterone is actually anti-inflammatory um, opposed to many beliefs out there. So it is the healthier thing to do for Flex Lewis if his numbers are too low and crashed and stuff from obviously years of competing and all that sort of stuff, then it seems like it's the healthiest option to sort of go on TRT. And that seems like the way for most retired IFB pro bodybuilders. Now, one thing I want to mention before we wrap up this video, I want to give a shout out to Eddie Brecamontes, who got married to his wife, uh, it seems like just a few days ago. He's obviously an IFB pro bodybuilder and does pretty well and competed this year too, I believe. So anyway, give a shout out to them in the comments below and a congratulations. So anyway, that's it for this video. If you guys like and appreciate the content, please give the video a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you won't miss out on any of the content that goes up for myself, Xavier Wills at Desktop Bodybuilding, including our live podcasts that are coming up featuring Brett Wilkin, Nathan D'Asher, Martin Fitzwater, and all those guys. And also Stanimal Stan Delonju, uh, who is uh, Sean Roden's former training partner and IFB pro bodybuilder. So anyway, make sure you do that. I'm Xavier Wills, this is Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are out.